I don't know if people generally like Borderlands 1 or what the consensus is, uh, but I got a lot of my friends telling me they would absolutely not play it a second time. I know I tried playing it years ago and I remember not liking it, but I can't really say why. I wanted to like this game, but something fell short. So now that Borderlands 3 is out and the enhanced edition of Borderlands 1 has come around, let's take a look at things. First, we'll discuss the main selling point. A graphically revamped looter shooter from 2009, unique art style, and a non-serious take on video games. It's an attempt at art, and try something that was new at the time. It's an attempt. The game at the time of this review also costs about $30, or four copies for $120 to fill a party of four. This price is about right for a game that came out 10 years ago, and it's four DLCs. Can't really complain much about the asking price here, especially since if curiosity is striking, you could probably find it on sale on Steam during any season. Unfortunately, this game doesn't sell in a four pack like Borderlands 2 does. The game's theme is strong. You're on a wasteland planet looking for treasure that most people think is a myth. There isn't a real backstory to your characters that I'm aware of. You just sort of show up and this weird Cortana-like plot device immediately tells you what to do. I more or less don't have a problem with how the plot is driven, but the story seems really haphazardly put together. This is especially evident when you're hopping between quests and a character will start talking about something you've never encountered yet as if you were just in the middle of dealing with it. Most of the story is told in text boxes when you take quests, which I didn't read because frankly I wasn't that interested. Some of the side quests offer deeper lore into some characters and the companies that govern the world the game takes place in. I found these enjoyable, but few and far between. Overall, it's serviceable, but nothing special. Especially when, by the end, you feel a massive dissatisfaction. Like you've been left on the short end of a plot hole. Hope I'm not being too vague here. The ending is shamefully terrible. It leaves you with more questions than answers, in less a mysterious way, which is what I feel the game was going for, and more of, why would you do that? sort of way. The soundtrack for this game does its job, but just barely. I won't call it exciting, but it isn't intrusive or off-cue either. The same goes for the sound effects. I do have a problem with the volumes of sounds and the dialogue though. At certain times, the audio just goes completely out of whack for how loud it's supposed to be. This was especially an issue during combat, where the sounds behind me and in front of me sounded like the same direction, and occasionally sounds that were nearby were actually coming from far away, and vice versa. It was one box boss fight near the end of the game, where all of his taunting dialogue only came through my left headphone and whisper quiet. As far as the sounds of guns or skills, they're unique enough that they don't get too stale, but they're repeated often enough that you know what gun is firing just from the sound. Uh, the visuals of the game are at times striking and beautiful. It tries to create the atmosphere of an alien planet, and it captures that well enough to put you there. The aliens are interesting and creepy, and the towns are decrepit and run down, but it suffers from the fads of when it was made. The entire game has that gray and brown, heavily desaturated palette to it. It's a shame. They took the time to hand draw all these textures, but it didn't really give the game any color. The exception of guns, which sticks out really bad when an enemy has a bright crown box in their hands, contrasting their gray and brown outfit. Beyond that, you can tell that the art style is just a toe in the water at this stage. It doesn't take advantage of a lot of graphical technology that existed at the time, and I feel like this was to avoid complicating the process. You have to combine that with some of the really bad looking screen effects and elemental effects. It's a far cry from where it wants to be, but for the first game in the series, it gets some forgiveness for me. You can tell this is truly why people fell in love with Borderlands and still say they have fond memories of it, despite all of its shortcomings. There is some issue with the presentation being an off pace, like characters getting intro cards and cutscenes to introduce them early on, and then it just sort of falls off. This game does it for every larger boss, and you wish they did it more often. I feel like that sense of style should have been more consistent throughout. After the absolute banger of an intro this game has, the middle of it badly needs some of that kick. The voice acting isn't bad. In fact, I quite like it. It adds the bulk of the personality sound-wise. There needs to be more of it. It's oddly sparse. Here we're gonna get into what people really like about Borderlands and what I really hate about it, the humor. It's part of the appeal of the design, but it's casual Friday office humor with just a touch of Comedy Central offensiveness. It's boring! The jokes don't land. And worst of all, it feels like my dad wrote these. Collect this guy's dirty magazines. This scientist lady is going crazy and falls in love with her tape recorder. This guy wants you to get him some booze. Uh, the same guy that Randy Pitchford voices and he calls you a chump. Randy Pitchford literally calls you a chump in this game. Uh, and we've got shotgunning midgets. It's a three ring circus and a laugh riot. 
Really, have I mentioned that the max level of this game is 69? <laughs> nice. Borderlands feels like a looter shooter, all right. You got your gun, you got your ult, you got your grenade, you got your melee. So that checks everything off the list for things you can do, like typical looter shooters. It somehow involves minor platforming and its exploration. This is not good. After 10 years, looter shooter devs haven't figured out that platforming in a first person game is not a good idea. And it started in small part in this game. It features frequent invisible walls, and in general, it's a little clunky. It should have been left out, but I doubt anyone on a dev team will ever learn this. Looter shooters in first person and platforming do not mix. Speaking of movement though, walking around is kind of a drag, and it feels like they do this on purpose. I'll tell you why. Padding! This game is short, super short. The main game, Sans DLC, took me 13 hours, and that's doing every single side quest. This is frustrating because the side quests are purposefully made in a way as you backtracking and zigzagging and retracing your steps. You can't progress in certain quests, even if they have closer objectives, until you get the one that's farther away. Certain quests have overlapping areas, but you can't do them at the same time. And there's only one objective tracker. This ruins otherwise good quests, and it's all to make the game take longer as you constantly in and out of the menu to look at where to go. The maps aren't designed super well either, but don't worry, they've heard this criticism. And there's a line in the first DLC that literally insults you to thinking that the map design and the quest tracker is terrible. How dare you think they've done anything wrong? This is clearly a thought out choice that they made for ill, and they're trying to defend it. At some point, they must have tried though, because there are cars in this game, and the cars are all right. They feel decent to control and they look thematic, but oh man, there's car combat, and car combat in this game is boring, pointless, and occasionally frustrating. This is what I mean by frustrating. If I could avoid a car, I did. Eh, there was a point about three-fourths of the way through the game where I thought they forgot about vehicles entirely. And then I get blown up and get back up, and then I realized that my walking around guns did much more damage than the vehicle's guns. I could destroy them in a few shots with my sniper rifle. This is what I mean by pointless. But let's talk about the main form combat. That's the bulk of the game, right? Most areas are about two to eight guys who stand there and shoot at you. About two to four that will run at you screaming. Maybe one or two turrets. Then you got your aliens, who are best taken care of by kiting. And since we've already established how movement is in this game, enemies are annoying. They're pests. They're more annoying than challenging. And when they're challenging, they're too challenging. Walking hulks of meat that kill you in a couple shots, or laughing mosquitoes that die instantly. There's no in-between, and the game needs that in-between. Unfortunately, there doesn't look to be any attempt at balancing Borderlands. They kind of just threw everything together, slapped some level restrictions on there so you have to do the side quests, and said, happy vault hunting. Yeah, there are some happy accidents where the balance is just right. But don't count on it, especially since the AI is none too bright, and the fight for your life mechanic is spotty and reliability. Occasionally it will just spin out of control, and there's nothing you can do about it. But as far as balance, I personally hate leveling systems being shoehorned into my games. Adding it to shooters is an interesting idea on paper, but I think inherently a flawed one. Even in Destiny, a more recent game. The goal of the gameplay isn't to get to the level where you can tackle certain quests or get a higher stat number so you can win. It's to stack those sweet, sweet conditional bonuses. More damage on kill. More movement speed on kill. More damage to these types of enemies when you do this specific kind of thing. More of this or that when you do this or that. That's what makes high level RPG play fun. And Borderlands has no idea how to get you there. It just has you grind and walk around. That's why you guys play Final Fantasy, right? To grind, to walk around, not the strategy finding out what works or what doesn't. The skill trees themselves are a mess, and skills that work together are in completely different branches. If you want to have a specific build, you need to dip into each branch. This is counterintuitive just from the way the menu implies things. Want to buff phase walk related things? Dip into each tree, take just the phase walk skills. Want to buff just your weapons? Again, dip into each tree, get the relevant skills, and hope you don't have to take something unrelated just to unlock what you want. This is a huge problem. The game even punishes you for using weapon types outside your class, and it punishes you for changing weapon types too often. The game's systems are in a constant state of contradicting themselves. This makes stacking bonuses really difficult. 
Let's talk about the guns. The guns are interesting. You got lots of different types of things they can do. Sniper rifles with exploding bullets, shotguns that fire in three round bursts, two round revolvers that can one shot a lot of lower tier enemies, SMGs that shoot pellets like a shotgun. Once you add legendary modifiers to it, things start getting crazy. Cause it's an entry into the idea though. There's not a whole lot of variation here despite the gajillions of guns this game claims it has. In reality, there's one gun per brand. Jacob's guns hit harder. Malawan guns usually have elements on them. Ladoff guns fire faster. SNS, my personal favorite, generally has decent stats and more ammo in the magazine. But sometimes you find a gun lying on the ground and it's almost exactly what you have. And it's got acid rounds now. Whoop de doo. This comes with some bumps, like how almost every gun is stupidly inaccurate, so Hyperion guns can have accuracy as their main stat. In the end, it's the illusion of huge variation, but it's still good variation, if that makes sense. It causes money to become useless very quickly for anything except expanding how much ammo you can carry. And it's not a bad thing, it's certainly a foot in the door design wise. Thankfully, we've come a long way. Now, I should have mentioned this at the forefront, but this is the enhanced edition of Borderlands 1. And what is that supposed to mean? It's kind of like a remaster, right? They give you some more settings, so optimize a little bit, runs smoother, it looks better. Kind of. This is like a half-ass of that. It'll let you play in 4K, fair enough, but my monitor only displays 1080p, so I'll just set it to that. And okay, why is the frame rate still so low? Okay, the refresh rate is stuck at 24 hertz, no matter how many times I tried to fix it. That was an immediate red flag for how the rest of this game was going to go. Then I alt tab to note this, and surprise, surprise, my mouse was locked to the upper left corner of the screen. I play on controller mostly anyway, so this doesn't bother me personally, but I know certain people who would raise hell over having to reboot this game every time they alt tab just to play it. The game's frame rate dips here and there, certain effects or AI moving around much cause the game to chug, but overall I guess this really isn't too bad. I did not enjoy this. I struggled sitting through all of the padding when all I wanted to do was find cool guns, find out what the story was about. Those things won't keep you going when you have to deal with the obvious amounts of stretching this game suffers from. I was going to tackle the DLC in this video, but I just can't. Maybe I'll come back to it in the future. This is my first review and I'm actually kind of nervous about doing it, but I thought I'd take my shot and put this out here and get yelled at by a bunch of people who really like this game. But thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment if you want to discuss this video at all, if you want to discuss Borderlands 1 at all, or if you'd like me to cover something else. I, I'm open to suggestions.